Hello, a quick little test. Let's see if audio and video works. Hopefully it does. Okay, testing, testing, testing. I think it works. Uh, at least I can see and hear myself when I look at the stream. Just testing a bit more and then I'll grab a cup of coffee and then we'll see each other again in 18 minutes.
and we are live hopefully um hi guys ha hi everyone uh the first thing i would like to ask you is if you can hear me and see me all right please write something in the chat if you can see me and hear me or if you can't please write that as well i'm gonna wait for a few seconds and see if everything seems to be working hopefully and i think there is a lag of about 20 seconds so it will take a little while before i see any comments from you all good says shane cool gonna wait for one more confirmation <laughs> Mm -mm. All right, so uh, welcome to this little live stream. Uh, thank you Lauva and Venus Optics for inviting me to talk again. Uh, tonight I'm going to talk about basically all the different Venus Optics lenses for macro photography. Uh, I think someone at Lauva mentioned that I am probably the one in the world who has reviewed most of them. I've reviewed all of them uh, but the 24mm probe lens, uh, which is actually on its way to me now. So soon I'm gonna have reviewed every macro lens by Lauva. Uh, so, uh, oh, I think I'm missing some comments here. Let's scroll down. Okay, nice. I missed like five comments <laughs> saying that everything sounds and looks good. Great. Uh, yeah, so. The idea with this live stream is that I'm going to talk about each and every uh, macro lens by Lauva and give you my opinions uh, about it. And I'm going to try to kind of um, tell you guys which lens is good for what kind of photographer, depending on what you're going to photograph and depending on what camera you have. Uh, this is actually a question I get by my followers on YouTube and Instagram like every day, several times every day someone asks, should I buy this or that Lauva lens? Um, so that's gonna be the topic for tonight. And uh, I'm gonna tell you a few words about myself before we continue. So I am Michael Weidel. I am a Swedish macro photographer and YouTuber. I have a YouTube channel uh, mostly about macro photography, but also a little bit about other kinds of photography as well. But macro photography is kind of my, my main uh, passion and what I make most of my videos about. And I've been doing this now for almost three years. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I post new videos every week and uh, my link, the link to my YouTube channel is uh, down here in a few seconds. And uh, yeah, that's it about me, I think. And I'm sure there are going to be some questions uh, during my live stream. Uh, feel free to ask any questions and I will try to catch them uh, while I'm talking. And then in the end, I might go back and try to answer some questions I might have missed. So please just ask questions and I'll do my best to get to them uh, when the time is right. And I'm uh, following here the comments in... Uh, uh, the Facebook stream, but I think the people at Lauva are gonna forward comments from YouTube uh, to Facebook, so hopefully I will see all of them. So yeah, let's go. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, first of all, a little bit about Lauva's macro lenses overall. Uh, I really love them and uh, it's not because I am a paid ambassador or anything like Lava don't pay me to like their lenses. I, I really do love them anyway. Uh, so I am really happy uh, to, for example, do a live stream like this talking about their lenses because I really do love them and I have purchased several of them that I'm going to talk about. And uh, as I said, I've used most of them at some point. Um, and the reason I like them so much is that uh, they have truly tried to make lenses that didn't exist before they made them. Uh, they have done some really unique lenses like the uh, 15mm wide-angle macro lens or the 24mm probe lens that we're going to talk about. 
and also like all of the other macro lenses they go from infinity to two times magnification which is kind of a unique thing. I still don't think there are any other lens manufacturers that actually do create lenses like this. So um, if you want to have two times magnification but also the ability to focus on infinity you kind of have to go to Lauva and buy their lenses. And they have great build quality, uh, they are built all out of metal and uh, they hold together really well, they are well made and they have a good feeling of quality and um, yeah they are really like good value for money as well most of their lenses are like 400 or 500 dollars and uh, like other competing macro lenses often cost a lot more uh, while only going to one time magnification uh, so that is a, a short summary of why i really love the lava macro lenses So, uh, also uh, before we get going with the main content, I want to mention that there is a code here. <laughs> there. <laughs> and the first 20 people who use that code at uh, Venus Optics website to uh, make an order get 5% discount. So if you're looking to buy a Lava lens, um, go there and use the code tonight uh, to be sure to be one of the first to use it and to get the 5% discount that can make for uh, some money when you buy a lens. So that is a tip for me. Okay. Just checking my notes here to see um, if I missed to say anything. No, I think we're kind of ready to go. Uh, so I actually started macro photography a little bit before Laova started uh, releasing many of their lenses and at that time if you wanted to photograph insects uh, which is kind of the most fun subject to photograph if you're doing macro photography uh, you had to kind of make your own solution you had to like reverse a lens on extension tubes or something like that to get to like two times magnification which you really want to get to if you're gonna photograph insects uh, so I did all kinds of solutions like that and to reverse a lens on extension tubes can be a great uh, solution to get high magnification macro photos. Um, it's really a good solution if you want to save money but it's not really that convenient because then you're locked at a certain magnification so maybe you uh, are put on enough extension tubes to go to 2.5 times magnification for example which is a good spot for small insects and then maybe you encounter a butterfly or uh, some larger animal which you want to photograph and you cannot do that without changing the amount of extension tubes um, so that's the benefit with using a dedicated macro lens that you can very easily just uh, zoom in and out uh, and pick your own magnification very quickly and that is why I think it is worth spending money on a real macro lens if you're serious about macro photography. So uh, let's talk about uh, Laua's lens lineup. Uh, I'm gonna go through one lens at a time and talk a little bit about that lens, show you some photos and uh, try to tell you who I think the lens is good for uh, and what, at what stage in your macro photography career you should buy it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start by talking about the Laova 15mm, uh, which is maybe the most special lens in the Laova lineup. I think actually that at least it is the lens that is, has the most characteristic look to the photos and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. So let's see, let's switch to my computer screen here and let's bring up uh, the photos related to the 15mm lens. So I included some product photos here to show you what it looks like. Um, here it is. And uh, what's special about this lens is it is a wide angle macro lens, so, or rather an ultra wide angle macro lens that goes, uh, it is 15 millimeter in focal length, which means it, it captures a lot of the surroundings, but still it 
uh, has a one-time maximum magnification, which means you can get really close to an insect while still capturing like everything that is around it. And I will show you in a moment how this can look, but it is a really special and cool look. And uh, actually I think Lava is still like uh, the only ones that make a lens like this. Um, I reviewed this lens a couple of years ago and I really loved it. Uh, I actually would really like to buy it. Uh, so as you can see, there is uh, like, a small like lever here and uh, this is actually uh, um, a shift function so you can also actually use it uh, if you're photographing like um, something that's tall like a building or something and you want to straighten out the lines uh, that could also be useful but like I like you never kind of use it in macro photography but it is like an, an extra uh, feature so this lens is uh, $499, so it's not the cheapest lens uh, flower, but considering how unique it is, I think it's really worth that money. It's 410 grams, so it is uh, pretty lightweight. Uh, it comes for a Canon EF, like any Canon DSLR, uh, you can use this lens, it comes for Nikon F. And uh, Sony A mount, the old Sony uh, mount, Pentax K mount and Sony FE. So you can use this on uh, full frame cameras and also on APS-C cameras. But you get the most out of the wide angle effect of course if you use it on a full frame camera. So let's look at some photos. Here is, this one is probably not quite uh, one time magnification. Uh, but it's still pretty close and uh, you can see uh, my son here in the background. This was probably shot at um, f2.8. Uh, no, sorry, f4 actually. I think f4 is the, <laughs> the widest aperture on this lens. So this was probably shot at f4. Uh, here is uh, another photo, uh, probably at one time magnification. And this uh, small little hoverfly. Um, uh, I, I shot this uh, without a flash, but it was a sunny day. Uh, and to note here, and that we will uh, talk more about, is that uh, when you're focusing this closely with this lens, you almost have to push the front of the lens against the insect. That is how close you have to be. And uh, this is not because the lens is, is like um, badly designed or anything. It is just... Uh, an effect of the very short focal length. So uh, this is nothing you can uh, really get around. Uh, but some insects, uh, when you come from the right angle, they don't really care that you push the lens against them and then you can get photos like this one. Uh, this one was also uh, shot without a flash, handheld, and uh, it... Uh, uh, it was probably shot at f4 as well because the background is really really blurred out and uh, you don't really want maybe to have the background that blurred out the photos look uh, actually a lot cooler when it's not and i'm going to show you some uh, in a moment in a few moments but as you can see here or as you can hopefully see the lens is super super sharp and this is actually something i can say of all the lava macro lenses they are extremely sharp at all apertures uh, so you you never have to worry about that if you purchase a lava lens they are really great optically and uh, by the way i also never seen any problems with chromatic aberration or anything like that in lava lenses they are just superb i would say optically uh, lee vanstone asks uh, how do you solve the vignette issue at f4 on full frame with this lens and I didn't actually think that much about uh, like the, that there would be a vignette issue. Maybe on um, if you're like not shooting macro with this lens. Maybe if you're shooting a landscape or something, uh, there could be some vignetting, especially if you're using the shift function. And actually, I don't have a really good solution for that. I would consider this lens mainly a macro lens i would not use it for like architecture or landscapes or anything like that that is actually 
like an area where this lens is not perfect optic optically. Like it is really optimized, I think, for macro photography. Um, so uh, I would actually not recommend to buy this lens if you're planning to use it for landscapes and stuff like that. It, but on the other hand, if you want to take really cool looking macro photos, it is great. Uh, another shot, uh, this is also shot without a flash, I spent like a few hours shooting without a flash just to see what you can do with it. And then most of the time you have to shoot at kind of f4 to get enough light so then the background gets really blurred out. But even here you can see like my, uh, <laughs> my fingers here, like it's really really hard to get a photo like this with another macro lens. Uh, so I, I think it's really cool. Here we're starting to look at some photos that are shot uh, with a flash. And uh, then I'm placing the flash on an arm slightly above the, the, uh, the lens front. And I have a diffuser that is really important to get good light. Uh, the benefit with shooting with a flash is of course that you can shoot at smaller apertures. I think that this was probably shot at maybe f. 8 or f11 or something like that and then you can get more details in the background and you can get a really cool look in your photos. This is another one uh, shot at the same time with a flash and this is actually maybe one of my favorite photos of all time. I really love this shot and as you can see it is really really sharp. Uh, yeah just lovely and again it is impossible to take a photo like this with any other macro lens, like a 50, 60 or 100 millimeter macro lens. You just cannot do it. You cannot capture the insect at such a high magnification while still having so much of the surroundings. Um, so yeah, I really love the look you can get. Uh, here is another one. I didn't quite manage to get the focus perfectly on the fly's eye. You can see here that the eye is slightly blurry and the focus landed here on this middle of the fly here. But I still kept this image and I love it so much because I think it is a really cool uh, perspective again with these flowers in the background. And you can see here that these petals are like bent a bit upwards and uh, the reason for that is actually that the lens is pushing against the flower. So now you can kind of see how close you have to be with this lens to, to take a, a close-up of an insect. You basically have to push the lens uh, against the insect. Um, so with that in mind, I would... Yeah, and this is just to show you how a normal photo with this lens can look. Uh, which is a, a, like a, not a macro photo. Uh, and here the focus is here on my wife. And uh, the depth of field is pretty short. Uh, here is another one. You can see the lake here in the background. This was shot with a flash. Um, and let's look. Yeah, I didn't quite get uh, the focus perfectly. It landed on the flower here and not on the fly. Uh, but I still like the look of this photo. Here is another insect sitting on my Sony X3000 action camera. And as you can see, the sharpness is really, really good here. Here you can see uh, the, what's it called? Dead cat that I made. And yeah, that's it for. Uh, the photos uh, from the 15mm lens from Lauva. Um, so this lens, I would recommend it not as a first macro lens. I don't think you should begin macro photography with this lens because it is actually one of the hardest to use macro lenses I've tried. It requires a lot of patience. Uh, but when you get a good shot, it is really good and unique in its look, so it can be very rewarding. I would recommend this lens to someone who has done macro photography for maybe a year or something like that and want to have some variation, try some new perspectives, uh, yeah. So let's look for some uh, questions. Um, 
Corna Stenecker asks, do you sometimes use your 60 to 100 mm macro lenses for portraits too? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I think they are great for portraits. Uh, you can maybe not get as blurred out backgrounds as with a dedicated portrait lens, but they can take some really good portraits and hopefully I have some examples of that that I will show you later in this stream. Uh, of course it's manual focus, all the Laova macro lenses are manual focus. So if you're gonna use them for portraits, uh, it requires that you are kind of used to uh, doing manual focusing. It's not that hard, especially if you're using a, a mirrorless camera, it's pretty easy. Uh, so they are great for portraits as well. Let's see if we have some more questions. Um, what subjects are, are this 15 mm lens good for? Um, yeah, any subject that you're interested in shooting, uh, I think it, it creates the most beautiful results with insects. I've seen some people use it for like snails and uh, like larger insects and butterflies, like yeah. Anything that is not too skittish because you have to be very close to the subject. Um, yeah, use your imagination and creativity. All right, Oi. we have already spent 20 minutes and I only talked about one lens, so I'm gonna speed up a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, next lens we're gonna talk about is the Laowa 100mm. Uh, let's switch to my screen again. And let's switch to the Laowa 100mm photos. So, uh, this is a, a, a newer lens in uh, Laowa's lineup. Um, and as you can see, it has won some prestigious awards as well, which I think it really deserves. So I would say this is almost like the, uh, like if you cannot decide what macro lens you're gonna get, this is a good bet because this one is very versatile and very good. Uh, this is a full frame lens. Uh, so if you have a full frame camera and if you want good working distance, uh, this is the lens to get. If you have a smaller sensor, if you have an APS-C camera, I think there are some other lenses that are probably a better choice. Because with a full frame lens, it is uh, bigger and heavier than, uh, for example, an APS-C or Micro Four Thirds lens. And um, I really think it's stupid to carry around more lens than you're actually using, which would be the case if you put a full frame lens on a, on a, a smaller sensor camera. As you can see, it's pretty beautiful. Uh, it looks modern. Um, here is the front of the lens and actually on this picture, uh, they have removed the front filter that comes with the lens. So the lens is actually like hollow in, on the inside and, and this uh, part here moves back and forth when you're focusing. Uh, but it comes with a filter screwed on, like a glass element here in, in the front, uh, which I recommend you to keep on if you don't want to get uh, stuff into your lens. Um, yeah, it's a nice lens. Here are some sample photos. Here is an ant that I took when I reviewed this lens uh, like a year ago, last summer I think I reviewed it. And as you can see with two times magnification you can get really close to your subject. This lens goes all the way from infinity to two times magnification. Here is the ant again. As you can see, perfect sharpness, perfect optics. Uh, this is maybe the most perfect Laowa lens optically that I've tried. And a good thing with this lens as well, if you're using a DSLR, is that uh, it comes, at least in some variants of it, has um, aperture coupling with the camera so that you can e most, more easily focus uh, on a large aperture and then take the shot at a smaller aperture, which is great if you're using a DSLR. Because otherwise, with these LARs, you often get a very uh, dark viewfinder. Here I didn't maybe put the focus perfectly, but uh, what is in focus is very sharp, as you can see. And uh, it's really a lot of fun to use a lens that goes to two times magnification. 
Um, in the beginning, when I began doing macro photography, there weren't any lenses that went to two times magnification. So I had to buy like a normal one that went to one time magnification. And it was so frustrating because then I always had to crop uh, to, to get close to the subject. But with this lens, you don't have to do that. Here is a hoverfly. This lens is uh, $450. Uh, many people uh, ask me about the lava lenses to say that this lens is out of stock in my country. Uh, can you help me? And actually, uh, this is quite common. Many of the lava lenses are out of stock in Sweden as well, where I live. But there is a simple solution. You just go to Lava's website. They ship worldwide. You usually get the lens pretty quickly, within a few days. So this is what I do when I uh, buy lenses from Lava. I just buy them from their website. And it is uh, really easy and uh, you get a good price there as well. This lens is, uh, I would say, one downside with the 100 mm that we're looking at uh, example photos of now is that it is a little bit heavy and a little bit long. So if you're looking for a lightweight lens, this might not be the best one. I'm going to show you my favorite in a moment. But optically, this lens is really flawless. I really love it. And as you can see, it has a very beautiful background blur. The red background here is actually my red uh, shirt <laughs> that I held behind to get an interesting look. Here is a shot taken without a flash, I think. And here you can see the lens on a Canon uh, R, what the model is called. And as you can see, the lens is pretty big uh, and slightly heavy. Uh, so that it would be maybe the only downside with this lens, that it isn't the smallest or lightest lens in Lava's lineup. Other than that, it's great. Uh, it comes for Canon EF, Nikon, uh, Sony FE, and now the new Nikon Z mount and the new Canon R mount, as you're seeing right here. Uh, so this is a really solid lens, uh, especially if you have a full frame camera, I can highly recommend it. So, uh, let's return to my face. <laughs> so, uh, Kevin Jung asks, do you have any dream macro lens? Um, I think maybe... Uh, actually, I think uh, you came pretty close to making a dream macro lens uh, with uh, the new uh, Lava 65mm. Uh, what I like about this one is that it is, uh, let's see if we can get it to focus. This is a 65mm, it's a lens for APS-C. And this is one of the newest lenses from Lava. And this is really a lens that I've been waiting for. APS-C is a good sensor size for macro photography if you want to have lightweight lenses. You can see that this lens is very small and very lightweight. It's only like, I think, 330 grams or something like that, which is not much at all. And it takes really, really beautiful photos. Uh, and it is pretty narrow as well. Having a narrow macro lens is good because then if something sits on a surface, you can more easily take a photo of it. So I think to answer your question, my dream macro lens would be something which is um, similar to this one, but even narrower, maybe with um, a max aperture of maybe just f5.6 or something, so that you could make it narrower, because if it would be even narrower and, and this short and small, you would more easily be able to photograph things that sit on a surface. So that would be my dream macro lens. Please make a lens like that. Like a small version of the probe lens. That would be my dream lens. Uh, so let's, while we're talking about the Lava 65mm, let's talk more about it. Uh, let's look at some sample photos. Um, I'm gonna switch to my screen. Uh, so yeah, here we can see some more photos of this lens that I just showed you. Um, I ordered this lens, whoop, 
from uh, Lawa's website and I got it uh, within a week, so it was pretty quick. Um, as I said, this lens is so great because it goes from infinity to two times magnification and the lens is very small and very lightweight as you saw and it is really awesome optically. Uh, and before this, uh, there weren't really any great macro lenses for, uh, as I see it at least, for Sony FE or for Fujifilm X. Uh, but with this lens, you have a really great choice. Um, here you can see, uh, is it a mosquito? Something similar at least. <laughs> I'm not that good at uh, insects. Uh, as you can see, it is really sharp. Uh, here's an ant. This was the first time I used this lens. Or at least the first time I used it after I bought it. I did a review video of it earlier. Um, really sharp, as you can see. Really beautiful bokeh, as you can see. Here is... Oh, I forgot the English word, name for it. It's called Bark, Borre in Swedish. This one is like 4 millimeters long. 3 or 4 millimeters. So it's a really small creature. Um, it sits here on my finger. I actually found it on my finger. I didn't found it on a tree or something. This is such a cute insect. It almost looks like a little dog or something. <laughs> like a hedgehog. <laughs> uh, yeah. Taken with the Laova 65mm on a Fujifilm X-T3 camera. Which is my new macro setup that I use most of the time. I really love it. Here are a couple of ants. Taken with the same lens, the Lava 65mm. This is actually the first time I think that I've gotten um, almost at least the eyes of two ants in focus in the same photo. All of the photos you're seeing that I'm showing you are taken handheld and most of them are taken with a flash. Um, and if you want to see more about how to do this kind of photography, my YouTube channel it's filled with videos uh, showing how to take photos like these. Here's a little weevil. Uh, I didn't get the focus perfectly on the eye. It was more here, but I still like this photo. It's walking on my arm, I think. Yeah, I took a few shots of this weevil. He was really cooperative. So then I uh, took the opportunity. Let's see if with this picture can load here. Come on. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, this lens is very sharp, uh, beautiful photos. Oh, one thing I learned about the Fujifilm X-T3 is that when you take compressed RAW files, it kind of seems to take some time for Lightroom to decompress them, so I'm gonna stop doing that. Uh, I'm really happy with this photo. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, if it shows uh, on your end, but you can really see every detail here in the eye, and you can see the pollen here. Here's another one with the Lava 65 mm Another one. Here you see this one wasn't. Uh, perfectly sharp. I think I, I used a little bit too slow uh, shutter speed, but it's an interesting photo because it is a uh, ladybug eating lunch. This is an, I think it's called aphid, or I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but this is the small creatures that ladybugs eat. Here we have a fly. So uh, to summarize, if you have a Fujifilm camera, Fujifilm X, or if you have a Sony APS-C camera, for example the Sony A6000 or A6400 or something like that, uh, or a Canon M mount camera, then I can strongly recommend the Lauva 65mm macro lens. It is such great value for money, it's such a great macro lens, and uh, yeah. Uh, my favorite lens probably from Laova at the moment. Yeah, let's look at a couple more photos. Uh, 
this one wasn't perfectly sharp. It is not the lens's fault. Uh, it is most likely I used a too small aperture and it looks like I got a bit of diffraction in here. Maybe the, the flash wasn't fast enough. But still a pretty cool photo. Alright. Uh, let's see if I have something more to say about the 65mm. It's $399, which is awesome, a great value for money. Uh, for example, uh, like the best Fujifilm macro lens, I think it's the 80mm, and that one costs more than double, maybe three times as much as this uh, lens. And that lens only goes to one time magnification, this one goes to two times. So, really great value for money. 335 grams, that's not much at all. And that's actually one of the reasons I bought this lens, because I really love having a lightweight macro setup. And then having a lightweight lens uh, is worth a lot. So this is, lens is basically half the weight of the 100mm. Alright, uh, let's move on to the next lens. And I think I'm gonna talk now about the Lauva 60mm. Which is also one of my favorite lenses from Lauva. Uh, I was shooting a lot on my Sony a7 III full frame camera earlier. And for a full frame Sony camera or a full frame camera of any brand, I think this is my favorite lens, macro lens from Lauva. As you can see, it has a slightly older look and design than the new 100mm. But the reason I prefer this one over the 100mm for a full frame camera is that this one is shorter, smaller and a bit more lightweight. And uh, yeah, as you know, I really value having lightweight equipment and this one certainly fits that. Um, I think it takes just as beautiful photos as the 100mm and it is super sharp and it's great. The only downside with this lens compared to the 100mm is that you cannot focus it to infinity on a full frame camera because then you get very heavy vignetting. So it is usable for macro photography on a full frame camera and up to around 3 meters. So you can use it for some portraits as well on a full frame camera. If you're using it on an APS-C camera it is great, uh, you can of course then focus to infinity because this lens is actually made for APS-C cameras. But if you have an APS-C camera I would really suggest to buy the 65mm lens instead. It's a lot smaller as you can see, it is more lightweight and it is more modern uh, in its design. But this one is only for mirrorless cameras, so if you have a DSLR APS-C I think you should get the 60mm. So, uh, let's look at some uh, photos from the Lauva 60mm and uh, so you can get a feel for what you can do with it. So, let's see. Yeah, here we have some more product shots. And as you can see, this design is a little bit older. It's kind of uh, one of... La this is actually, I think, Lauva's first macro lens. Uh, so uh, it has been around for a few years, but it is a great lens and above all it takes great photos. Uh, that is why I love it so much. And as you can see it looks a bit shorter here on this photo than it did when I showed you it. And the reason for that is that this is the DSLR version of this lens. If you mount it on a mirrorless camera it will be a bit longer uh, to compensate for the shorter flange or flange or however it's called flange distance on uh, mirrorless cameras. But it's the same optics otherwise, it's just that you have to put some extra tube on it. Um, so let's look at some uh, sample photos. I'm just gonna... hang on. Yeah, I, ju I was just checking something. It looked like my, my stream lagged a bit, but it's just Facebook that for whatever reason uh, pauses it. Um, okay, so some sample shots from the Lauva 60mm. Um, 
I think these ones were taken last summer. Uh, as you can see, the sharpness is truly flawless here. This is as sharp as it gets. This is one of my favorite uh, photos from uh, last summer. Um, I used a little bit too slow shutter speed, so it is a little bit uh, motion blurred here, but uh, I really like the look of this and uh, the color contrast between the orange and the green background. Here I had some sensor dust. Um, sometimes I'm too lazy to clean that up. Here is uh, a cuckoo wasp, a really beautiful insect. Um, I don't see them that often, so I was really excited when I found this one on uh, a red wall. Uh, I think this is my favorite shot of it. Uh, you can see the, the pigment here uh, looks kind of cool when it is slightly out of focus, because then the dots become <laughs> a little bit bigger. And uh, again, you can't really complain about the sharpness of this lens. It is truly perfect. Uh, this is actually a blueberry. And uh, it is uh, early in the summer when it hasn't finished really. So this is what a blueberry looks like. And the white thing here is actually my flash uh, with a diffuser. Here is another shot I really like, uh, a flower and this little guy. And as you can see, again, truly awesome sharpness, truly beautiful uh, bokeh, butterfly. I like this one as well. And by the way, if you're curious about the technique I use to take these photos, uh, you can go to my YouTube channel and watch some of my videos. Basically every photo that I'm showing you today, uh, you can see how I took that photo on my YouTube channel because I record almost all of my photo walks and make YouTube videos uh, about them. So, uh, I have so many sample shots of the Lauva 60mm because I've been using it quite a lot. Um, as you can see, uh, you can also take a bit more zoomed out photos and they can also look great. This is a flower taken in Kew Botanical Gardens in London last summer. This is a hoverfly of some sort. Another flower. It's a really small guy here. <laughs> Does anyone know what this insect is called? These are the, the, the guys that uh, usually sit on red uh, bricks, I think. Really, really small. This is my finger here. And as you can see, it is perfectly possible to take uh, portraits with the Lauva 60mm even on a full frame camera. This was taken with the Sony a7 III and I think I was standing maybe three meters away and as you can see there is no vignetting but if I would stand a little bit uh, further away for example if I would uh, want to get the whole body shot then I think I would have some vignetting. So that is about as far as you can go with the Lauva 60mm on a full frame camera. But if you're mostly using it for macro, it is truly awesome. I can really recommend it. Okay. Gonna uh, check my notes here to see if I forgot to say anything about the Lauva 60mm. Also gonna drink some water. So, the Lauva 60mm is $399. Uh, 500 grams, so it's really lightweight. Um, 
works great for APS-C and also full frame if you're doing macro only or like portraits as I show you. Um, comes for Canon EF, Nikon, comes for Pentax K, Sony A mount and Sony FE. Yeah, that's it about the 60mm. Um, so let's move on to um, the Lava 25mm, uh, which I actually own as well. I purchased it a year ago. Uh, so this is the Lava 25mm macro lens. Uh, this lens is more specialized towards a high magnification macro photography. It goes between uh, two times and five times magnification. So this is how it looks when you're uh, shooting at five times magnification, which is quite a lot. You can see here that the uh, aperture ring sits here on the front. Um, really nice feel to it. And uh, then if you're gonna shoot at only 2.5 times, it becomes shorter like this. And this is the mirrorless version of the lens. So it is, has uh, some extra length here. Uh, if you would uh, buy it for a DSLR, it would be even shorter. So, um, yeah, let's begin by looking at some sample photos. <laughs> and then uh, I can talk about the lens while we're looking at them. So, uh, here we have Lawa 25mm samples. So, yeah, here you can see how the lens uh, looks um, when it is uh, for a DSLR. And uh, let's look at some sample photos. So this lens is a bit more specialized. Um, if you're a beginner in macro photography, I would not recommend this lens as your first macro lens because it is locked to a very high magnification. So you can only shoot very small insects with it. And sure, if you're planning to only shoot really, really small insects, this could be a good option if you're a beginner. But um, I think actually it's better to begin with a more flexible lens with a bigger magnification range, for example, the 165 uh, or 60 millimeter. Uh, but if you already have a lens like that and want to go even closer, uh, this is uh, the lens for you. Uh, the working distance is of course shorter. Um, in macro photography in general, uh, the shorter the focal length, the shorter the working distance. So for example, this photo or this butterfly, I had to have the lens very close to it, probably just a few centimeters, maybe three centimeters or something like that. Here we have a little spider. This is a very small spider. Um, I didn't really get the eyes in focus, but I still think it's a pretty decent photo. And uh, this was probably shot at around three times magnification. Oh, here we have the blueberry again. Then I must have lied about taking that with <laughs> the 60 millimeter. I think actually now I, when I think back about it, I took this actually with a 25 millimeter. So I apologize for that. It, it got in the wrong folder. It was not taken with a 60 millimeter. And here you can get a feel for how great the magnification is. And this lens, of course, as with all the other Lava macro lenses is tack sharp, perfect sharpness at all magnifications and apertures. But uh, you have to consider that um, you get problems with diffraction when you um, shoot something really closely. And this is something you really have to be on the lookout for with this lens. And this is why I might not necessarily recommend it to a beginner, because if you want to shoot a lot at three, four or five times magnification, you will get diffraction problems if you're not shooting at like f2.8. And that can be frustrating if you're not used to uh, mitigating diffraction. So that is another reason why uh, maybe this is your second or third macro lens and maybe not your first one. Um, 
but great lens truly awesome if you like getting very very close to your subject um, yeah if you want something high magnification this is an awesome choice some more product shots this is how it looks on a DSLR no sorry this is not a DSLR <laughs> it looks like a DSLR but it's a uh, mirrorless camera so what more is there to say this lens is $399 uh, as many of the other Lauva macro lenses it um, weighs 400 grams so it's pretty lightweight um, not too bad and it is available for Canon EF and RF it's available for Canon uh, sorry Nikon F and Nikon Z mount Pentax K mount and Sony FE mount so it's available for a lot of different uh, cameras and yeah so let's talk about a lens that uh, the only lens actually that Lauva are selling right now that I haven't yet tried and that is uh, the 24 mm so unfortunately I don't have any sample photos because I haven't tried this lens yet um, but I will just um, talk a little bit about it just so I, I cover all the lenses um, yeah as you can see it is a pretty special design um, and this has made the lens kind of famous there are a lot of YouTube reviews of it if you are curious to know more about it and um, what's great with this design is that it is very narrow and that makes it possible to uh, shoot in spaces where it would be impossible with other macro lenses and you can kind of uh, like draw it through stuff and make really cool effects and uh, I think actually I'm not 100% sure but I think this is kind of waterproof so you can like stick it into liquids and stuff uh, which can uh, probably make for some very interesting photos and as you can see here it has some LED lights also at the front and um, yeah Besi despite being so long this lens is actually not that heavy uh, I was surprised to learn that this is only 474 grams so it's not that bad uh, but it is of course pretty unwieldy because it is so long and uh, yeah the uh, aperture of course uh, isn't as wide as with the other macro lenses but in macro photography most of the time you want to shoot at small apertures but with a lot of light because otherwise the depth of field gets so incredibly minuscule um, so I don't really see that as an issue uh, this lens is very expensive compared to the other lenses it's around 15 16 or 1700 dollars and I think the reason for that is it is a very specialized lens and it is geared towards a lot of um, high-end video productions and it is one of a kind lens and that is probably why it is so expensive and Lauva actually promised me to send a review copy so I will be reviewing this lens uh, soon on my YouTube channel which I'm really excited about so I'm gonna look through my notes here and, and check that I didn't forget <laughs> to mention any lens Let's see here. Uh, yeah, I think I covered all of the ones that Laowa has for sale right now. But there is one more lens to talk about, uh, which isn't, I think, for sale yet. And that is the new Laowa 50mm for uh, Micro Four Thirds. So this is what it looks like. I got this from some kind of rumor site. <laughs> so I hope it's okay that I show this picture. This is probably a prototype of this lens and uh, this I think is also exciting because now Lava do what they have done for full frame and mirrorless and uh, for APS-C cameras they do it for Panasonic and Olympus as well they release a two times magnification macro lens the first in the world uh, for uh, micro four thirds that goes to that kind of magnification so that's really awesome and with that small sensor, I mean, you get even closer because the sensor is so small. Uh, so I'm really excited uh, to try this lens as soon as I uh, get a review copy of it. Uh, Laura also said that I 
would get a copy of this once it is finished completely. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. And as you can see, this lens is very, very small, very, very lightweight. And I um, recently bought a Panasonic G9 camera, so I'm really looking forward to uh, um, using this lens on that camera. And 50 millimeter on uh, micro four thirds, that corresponds to uh, twice, meaning 100 millimeter on full frame. So uh, you will probably get um, Uh, pictures that look similar to the ones you would take on a 100mm uh, lava lens on full frame. So, my voice is actually starting to <laughs> be done, I think. Uh, so I, I will not uh, talk that much longer, I, I'm uh, afraid. But I've managed to go through all the lava macro lenses, I think. I really hope I didn't forget any. And I hope you got a little bit more uh, view of what they can all do. Uh, in general, I would say that like all of them produce pretty similar looks besides the 15 millimeter, which is a very extreme look. Um, if you have a, a full frame camera, I would recommend you, if you care about having a low weight, uh, I would recommend actually the 60 millimeter one. That is my favorite for full frame cameras. Uh, because it is more lightweight and smaller than the 100 millimeter and it is more balanced. The 100 millimeter is a great lens and if you want to shoot at uh, infinity and if you want a better build quality and maybe automatic aperture control, that is the lens to get. Uh, but I personally like the 60 millimeter. If you have an APS-C mirrorless camera, I would get, get the 65 millimeter any day of the week. That is a, such an awesome lens. If you have an APS-C uh, um, DSLR, like, uh, uh, what are they called, like Canon 700D or something like that, <laughs> then I would get the 60mm, uh, the Lava 60mm lens. And um, yeah, if you want to take really cool, very interesting perspective photos and you already have a macro lens and you want something uh, more interesting and special, I can really recommend the 15mm. And um, if you watch this stream and feel like I'm gonna buy one of these lenses, uh, take the opportunity to be one of the first 20 to use the uh, discount code that was here uh, just a moment ago. Uh, use that code, get 5% off uh, if you're one of the first ones uh, to buy something from Venus Optics homepage today. Um, so, gonna check if I forgot some question. Um, uh, will an extended range like a 3 to 1 macro lens uh, be useful? Uh, Kevin, uh, from Kevin. Uh, Actually, I'm not sure I would buy a lens that goes from infinity to three times magnification. Uh, I think that might be overdoing it uh, because that lens would have to be even longer probably than the two times macro lenses. And two times magnification, I think, is kind of the sweet spot for um, like the end point because uh, when you go uh, closer than that, you get more problems with uh, diffraction and stuff. So Usually I prefer even to shoot at two times magnification and crop into the photo than to shoot at three times uh, because I get less diffraction at two times. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Um, so I just want to announce uh, next week's live stream. It's Alberto Gisi Panissa. I hope I got that name right. Macro myths dispelled. How to take advanced macro shots. So that's next Friday uh, here at Lauva's Facebook page or at Lauva's YouTube. And uh, if you are interested to learn more about how I took the photos I showed you tonight, if you want to see more detailed in-depth reviews of the lenses I talked about, go to my YouTube channel. I have reviews of all the lenses uh, besides the probe lens and I'm gonna do a review of that very soon. 
and uh, I think actually I will end it here uh, because my voice is starting to really crack up. Uh, it has been fun as always uh, to be the host tonight. Uh, I hope you got something out of this and uh, feel free to contact me right in my YouTube comments or uh, maybe in Instagram direct messages to me. If you have more questions I am happy to answer questions about macro photography or photography in general. I usually do that every day. Uh, so feel free to contact me and uh, yeah. Thank you for watching over and out and goodbye.